Greens everyone, the Good Sir Nice here, and today we're looking at an absolute unicorn of a helmet known as the 3M Ceridine N49 Ultra Lightweight Ballistic Bump Helmet. So this thing is incredibly rare, and uh, you can barely find pictures of it looking it up, and even then they don't really tell you much about it. You can get the instruction manual, and even that's going to leave you out of a lot of uh, information you'd rather have. So, what we have is a helmet, this one particularly being a large, and my head actually is more of a medium, unfortunately. So, cool helmet, weighs 1.26 pounds, putting it uh, exponentially lighter than even the Opscore Maritime, both the MD and the newer SF lighter model. And it's boltless, as a proprietary retention system, and uh, yeah, it's uh, unique, so. What you'll notice, probably first off, as I've been, well, boltless, i.e. there are no bolts here, is that it's got these little nubbies here. What these nubbies do is the shroud, not the shroud, the uh, rail, not an arc rail, just the rail system here, which has an extra dovetail in the back, actually bolts in via these two screws into the side of the helmet <coughs> without penetrating all the ways through. And these uh, little nub clips down here basically give that support and help hold it in place. So you can actually mount stuff to it and whatnot. Now it's got the airframe Velcro, which is personally my favorite. And we got a little... We got a shroud on here. I don't know exactly which one. Sorry if I'm not the most up-to-date on shrouds. But, yeah, so we got this cool stuff. It comes standard with these D30 pads, which are pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, it's got this... Um, 3M retention system that I'll be, I'll be honest that's when we start getting to the things I don't like as much about the helmet so filling intelligence gaps and there are many to be filled with this particular helmet as you might be asking well how does the boltless system work well down here on the bottom instead of that normal uh, rubber mixture thing that you have to help seal all the Kevlar in place you've actually got this harder kind of like uh, almost like I guess a rim is what you'd call it it's like really built into the helmet pretty legitimately so what that's got going is on the inside you've got these uh, black portions here and basically you put these weird thing anchor clip things in there let me see if I can get you a good photo now, these things aren't really well talked about these anchor clips up here where is it there it is yeah they actually if you pinch them with some pliers you can actually pop them out but they're generally in there and they're a little bit wobbly so it, they do make a Team Windy CamFit version but it's heavily modified to go in these same clips and they also put this um, plastic nubble thing up on the front I think actually bolts into the uh, does it? allegedly it bolts into the um, the front NVG shroud or maybe it just latches onto the velcro and that's where you put the cam fit things on because there's no bolts to attach them to <coughs> so that's unique what I... okay so <coughs> sorry I'm still recovering here. You got some unique stuff going on here and what I particularly don't care for was actually the retention system here. So as you can see this retention system has little actual structural support to it like I can literally just pinch that together it's gonna flip and fold in over itself. The back end here has already started to show signs of wear and tear from its previous owner and yeah so back to the positives. We put this boy on like so Take the obnoxious chin strap, which feels basically like it might as well just be made out of cord at this point. Latch that on there, and the chin strap actually goes forward across the chin as opposed to the standard under the chin, which I thought was pretty unique. Got the helmet mounted. Now, if we're doing nothing else, you got a decent little helmet. Of course, being a large, it's going to swing hang around a whole lot. And uh, yeah, but it's comfy. It's super lightweight. It basically feels like wearing a hat, which is fantastic. You got your openings with the arc rails so you can put your hear, earring pro on. And yeah. Ultimately, if you want this thing to stop shaking though, we're gonna need to find some way to really like pad out the helmet. The D30 pads are comfy enough that come standard with. But ultimately, where things start to get tricky is if you try to run any form of nods with these. So if we mount our nods up in here real quick. I've only done this a few times, let me see. Yep, first try. So you mount the nods on there. Now we don't have a counterweight or anything. I think the cam fit actually works best if you're not running any sort of counterweight. But we set this up. Go, okay, we've got these heavy knots on. Yeah, we're shaking, so. If we go to put our knots down, which should be a one-handed motion, as you'd like it to be, you gotta move them down. 
And the helmet's now covering my face. Yeah, it's way too low. So we adjust that, and uh, yeah. The problem is, if you move side to side, it's gonna bang my obnoxiously large nose. So yeah, it's way too low. You can see I can look right over it. That's not good. That's not good, homie. Ugh. So yeah, keeping that in place, even with a counterbalance, I don't think it's gonna help as much because the uh, retention system is an X nape, whereas an H nape or a cam fit would work exponentially better. So we're gonna one hand it up, and oh look, nice forehead, dork. Yeah, it's it's absolutely massive. So. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think this is a fantastic state-of-the-art helmet. It's definitely one of the best helmets I've ever seen. It's just that, unfortunately, we got a large, and we probably needed a medium. I think the medium would definitely help, but even so, with the proprietary system and not being able to simply order us a camfit version, and not wanting to butcher this current setup because of its unique rarity, <clears throat> it kind of makes it very difficult to use, so it's not really available in many markets or anything, so there's a lot that could use improvement, but unfortunately this isn't really going to get all that improvement it needs, which is probably why most people are sticking to Opscore. I know, I think they're currently phasing out the airframe, which is a shame, because I actually really liked my airframe. So, if we compare this to our airframe setup, which looks a lot Gucci-er, Mostly because of the cat ears, let's be honest. Wilcox Shroud. The vent, I don't think the vent really justifies the added weight per se, but again, this is lighter than all the helmets I was ever issued. And we got our cam fit. If you look at the material on the cam fit, it is far more sturdy. It bends a little bit, but ultimately, it's got this thicker cross stitch over here that helps hold it together. A very comfortable chin cup. Basically, all sorts of crazy additions to make this far more comfortable. The camfit definitely helps. Generally, I am a fan of the H-Nape, the Gentex H-Nape, but I do think the camfit helps out a lot in keeping the helmet far more stable. So, if we put this guy on, oh yeah, there we go. Actually just got the pads adjusted so it fits far more comfortably. We get this going. Move this around here, come on. There we go. We take our chin strap. As you can see, this chin strap. Oh, this one goes over too. Okay, maybe I'm just an idiot. Cool. Could have sworn with the other way. Anyway, you got that set up. You got a comfy little helmet going on. You got your not, or, uh, your sword and's ready, so you can tell your team, "Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm gonna go get some more Mountain Dew. Anyone else want any?" It's important stuff. You gotta have your Mountain Dew. I actually don't drink soda. I drink Lacroix. So now, once again, we take our heavy little nods here and mount them into our shroud. You'd think this would be easier, because I can look at my camera and see where it's going, but it's not. Come on. I am your doctor. Do as I say. There we go. So now we're mounted. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of shaking going on, even without a counterweight. So now we say, hey, let's go dark. One hand down. No, look. It's right in place. Actually, I might need to move that up just a little bit. It's still adjusted from the other one. Eh. There we go. And yeah, now we've got nods. They only tap my nose instead of trying to violently murder it. And yeah, we can see. I mean, not really, because it's way too bright to turn these on, but we would be able to see we're in a dark situation. But I don't have a camera <coughs> with built-in night vision, so... Alas, here we are. So this is incredibly comfortable. Problem is... That instead of 1.26 pounds, we're now at like 2.2 pounds, and that's before the nods. And that weight's gonna add up pretty quickly. What are you doing? Don't do that. You stop that right now. So, as you can see, we've got the airframe actually being a medium. I think the medium size and the addition of the cam fit is actually the uh, key features that's making this exponentially more usable at the moment despite being basically an entire pound heavier. Now, a pound doesn't sound like a lot. It's not a lot, but a pound to bicep versus a pound to neck is a, it's a pretty big difference. So, I like comparing the newer stuff to the older stuff. It just gives it a better perspective, if you ask me. So, yeah, really cool, really unique helmet. If you look in here, pull that out, you can see it's just your normal disc padding. 
nothing too crazy or too fancy in there. Yeah, mostly what I was interested in when I was looking at this online was mostly the uh, art clips here because those anchor clips is really going to be your limiting reagent in uh, how useful this is going to be. Even the more generic kind of a uh, meh retention system goes also also uh, also. Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought it sounded more like Mike Tyson at first, but it didn't. Well, yeah, so what you got going on here is the way these are clipped in here <clears throat> without any real uh, rotation or anything like you'd have from a bolt is they tend to uh, twist up on themselves and most notably is when you're back here in the uh, <clears throat> rear portion of the helmet this will actually twist because of the soft material will actually twist kind of like sideways and get all bent up out of shape like that and that's going to adjust the overall fit of the helmet and kind of gunk up some of the retention you got going on so all in all, I do think, with a bit of effort and a little bit of TLC, this is probably the absolute best helmet I've ever seen. I do, I do actually really enjoy this, unfortunately, just given the large size and then the ability... Shh, computer. Discord. It's gonna... I know you can hear it beeping over there. So yeah, ultimately, comfortable helmet. Unique. With a little bit of TLC, I think you could really make this a... Uh, well, the Gucciest helmet on the market, but of course, with all the restrictions and inability, I actually do a lot of the modifying I'd like to get done. Oh, look, it says Saradine down there. That's nifty. All the modifications and stuff I'd like to get done, and the inability to really do that. It's just, um, although the weight would be a huge upgrade, the uh, shiftiness and everything else is going to make it more or less too difficult to use. Unfortunately. It would be a really neat thing to actually be able to run, but just given the head size, I've tried putting skull caps and stuff on it, and nothing has been helping it stay in place. So, cool helmet, do enjoy it. Just unfortunately, without a medium or without improvements to the retention system, it's not going to be as uh, feasible to field as the airframe currently is. However, I'm going to look into maybe getting another Maritime and transferring all of the newer Gucci stuff I have in the airframe swap out most of the garbage components that come with the Maritime, that's right. I do not like the OCC dial. Not a fan. I don't really like the little padding things that comes with either. The um, G4 padding is way better. Hell, the G30 padding in here is better, so. Again, to each their own, if it works for you, hey, cool, Gucci. That's awesome. I've got my preferences, you have yours, so. That's more or less the entirety of the video. Hope you found this, if nothing else, educational. And I'll see you guys in the uh, next video, so cheers, stay Gucci, stay chivalrous, bye-bye.